Hello. I'm going to start off this explanation of what archetypes are with what probably seem like really dopey questions, but here they are. First of all, how many wheels does a car have? Now this is not a trick question, I'm asking you about the wheels that touch the ground, not steering wheels and spare wheels and all of that. How many wheels does a car have? I bet you didn't have to think too hard about that. How many legs does a chair have? And again, no tricks here, just how many legs does a chair have? And by the way, I'm not getting at that the answer to everything is four, but I guess you didn't have to think very hard about that either. Who wears a crown? Again, not very complicated. I guess where it gets complicated is, are these answers always true? Do cars always have four wheels? Now they don't always have four wheels, they mostly do. There are very rare cars that have three wheels and there are some cars that have, you know, six and eight wheels. These are the exception. Some chairs in fact have one leg. You know, they're basic, they're like stools, or but they're not stools, they've got a back to them. They're a chair but they've got one leg. You could have a hundred legs and it would still be a chair. Likewise, a king or queen would normally wear a crown but it also could be a kid dressing up. It could be any number of things. Now, none of these things have kind of meanings. The answers aren't enshrined in legislation and nobody sat down and agreed on them. We just understand that things have an archetypal form, a form that we expect them to have. And I guess it happens the majority of the time, but nobody sits down and crunches the numbers and says, ah, yes, we all agree that cars have four wheels because here's the statistical analysis and so forth. Um, this is just not how archetypes come about. And they're very... They're just embedded in our consciousness. So, let's have a look and see what an archetype is. If we look in the dictionary, the very short definition is that it is an original model or a prototype. Now, a prototype is the one you build before you build the production ones. And that's somewhat true of what we're talking about, but that um, suggests a certain, you know, that again somebody came up with a chair that every chair since has been based on and that chair had four legs, and that's just not necessarily true. Um, often the archetypal something is actually quite different to the one that we made first. I'm not saying the dictionary is wrong, I'm just saying we want a more sophisticated understanding. So, let's look to this fellow, whose name is Carl Jung. Uh, he was a psychoanalyst and philosopher. Uh, he's been dead for a while now, and he was a student of this guy who you might have heard of called Sigmund Freud. These two, between them, pretty much invented a modern psychiatry and psychology. And in Jungian psychology, a archetype is a primitive mental image, so it's a basic mental image that we inherit through our culture and it's meant to be present for everybody. Everybody is meant to have these archetypes in their head. Another way of thinking of it is that it is a recurring symbol or motif that appears in art and literature and so forth, such as, you know, the stop sign. We can recognise the stop sign and most people from cultures can. Now, from most cultures can. Now, this is, um, this is a consciously constructed archetype, this one, but the ones we're talking about with characters aren't. So, before I wrap up this introduction, here's a bit of a puzzle for you. Now, the answer is not Rubik's Cube. I'll pause for a second to let you see if you can work it out. The answer is in fact chess. You only have quite a small number of pieces in chess and they're quite limited in what they can do. Nevertheless, you can have an incredibly complicated game, in fact one of the most challenging games known to man, with these very simple pieces, probably six or eight in total, and moving them around quite a limited space. And stories are like that too. We actually have... Um, Sorry, I've gone blank for a second here. We actually have a relatively small number of characters that we use in most stories. And you've probably noticed this when you're watching stories. So, those characters are called archetypes, and I'll come back shortly and tell you about some of them.